The history of Rotary is not a story of a man with a new idea, for Rotary's concept of fellowship is as old as civilization. But Rotary's story is that of a man who perceived fellowship in its broadest scope, and who took action to bring his particular vision of that concept to reality. Paul Harris, the man whose vision and action have changed the world. Much has been written about the beginnings of Rotary. How as a young professional in the big city of Chicago, Paul Harris sought to recreate the friendliness that exemplified his small hometown. But while that motivated bringing the idea to life, Rotary still would not have grown and flourished had not Paul Harris's vision encompassed a much broader perspective and had not his personal dedication and action transformed that vision into the reality of humanitarian service on a global scale. Rotarians and other folks as well sometimes think that Rotary developed of its own accord and without effort on the part of anyone. No. Rotary has not grown by virtue of the fact that a suitable formula had been devised. It has become worldwide in its influence because of the untiring effort to extend it. Paul's natural approach to the task of expanding Rotary was to rely on his personal acquaintance with enthusiastic individuals. Having inspired them with the idea of Rotary and its immense potential for service, he would send them back to their home cities to initiate new clubs. Joe, congratulations on being this year's recipient of the Paul Harris Fellow Award. This award goes to individuals that have given significant contributions in their community. I don't know of anybody that deserves this recognition more than you do. You epitomize a servant leader, or as we say it in the restaurant business, serving others above self. Last year, you received the Jefferson Award, which goes to someone that volunteers for his community. You have dedicated your time, talent, and resources to address our community's critical needs. Volunteerism should be your middle name. Your work in finding a cure for Alzheimer's disease says it all. I know because I have personally experienced this tragic disease myself, and it's heartbreaking when you see your loved ones lose their memory over a short period of time. Being on the National Alzheimer's Board and chairing the Alzheimer's Impact Movement Committee is a big plus for us Laredoans because it puts Laredo on the map. Your involvement in our community as well as nationally is getting us closer to finding a cure as a few medications have already been approved by the FDA. This shows that we are moving in the right direction towards eradicating this terrible disease. Joe, I know that you will be saying a lot more about Alzheimer's. I just want to thank you and, of course, Tina, your beloved wife, for being there to support you in all your endeavors. It is a blessing that you decided to come back to Laredo as you're a true pillar in our community. God bless you and your family. First, I'd like to thank Mr. Arciniega for asking me to say a few words. The truth is, is that I'm not succinct. However, I certainly will do my best to be succinct today because today is about him. Today, we celebrate his achievements. Today, we celebrate his passion. Today, we celebrate the one thing that he has advocated for many, many years as a result of his pain in losing his father. Mr. Jerry Schwebel, who is our Chair for Advisory Council, introduced uh, Mr. Arciniega to me last January. And it was a wonderful meeting. And he was here to advocate for the South Texas Alzheimer's Association. They needed a place to have their support groups. They needed a place to have educational uh, programs. So I said, welcome home. The University of Texas Education and Research Center at Laredo was designed just for certain occasions like that. It is about community education. It is about welcoming our community members. It's about welcoming our patients. It's also 
about welcoming as much education as we possibly can provide for our community. And with Alzheimer's, I don't know that there's enough education that we could provide. However, Mr. Arciniega has done his very best and he continues to advocate. Nobody pays him a cent and he does it because he believes. He does it because he has to speak for those who don't have a voice anymore, who don't have a memory anymore. But the loved ones that stayed behind to care for patients who have Alzheimer's or who had Alzheimer's, they remember. They remember very well. And they will never forget, nor will Joe. And because he won't forget, he is so deserving of this Paul Harris Fellow Award. I congratulate you from the bottom of my heart, dear friend. Well deserved. I want to extend my congratulations to you, Joe, on this very, very special honor uh, as you now join the ranks as a Paul Harris Fellow. It's such a well-deserved uh, tribute and honor to everything that you've accomplished, not just in Laredo recently as you came back home, but even the course of your of your life, because you saw how important it is to come back to our hometowns, our communities, and give back like you have been giving back uh, so much uh, to many that need it. And you and I have uh, become reacquainted, and uh, it's been uh, a renewed friendship uh, uh, of being, you know, Laredoans and and being part of what what really you know, is the beauty of, of our community. So uh, this honor uh, is, is well deserved. And you, uh, of all people, you know, are, are, are being recognized because of that moral fiber, the character of who you are. And that's what many of us have seen in you and will continue to see and we continue to be engaged with you. So I want to, I really want to just, just, just say one personal thing. You are a very passionate individual. You are one that really believes wholeheartedly in doing the right thing. And you and I became involved this year in, in a personal matter of the importance of uh, the disease of Alzheimer's and dementia that all of us have been touched by. And, and uh, it's amazing how the dots connect. We come together. And uh, I've, I really have enjoyed working with you and try to find uh, how we can work together and find a cure or a better way of life for those that have this horrible, horrible disease. And you've been at the forefront of this and you've allowed some of us, like me, uh, to join you in those forces. So uh, I look forward to working with you. I look forward to being by your side and uh, continue to give back to Laredo what it gave to us as we grew up here together in Laredo. So, muchas felicidades, un abrazo, congratulations, and may God bless you always. Well, you know, the first time I, I saw Joe, not even the first time I met him, the first time I saw him with a production of Man of La Mancha, which we had at a, at a new stage at TAMIU, and he just blew the roof off the place. I was just floored by how talented he was. And I remember thinking, what's this guy doing here? He, he should be on Broadway. That was my first impression of, of Joe Arciniega. Uh, but I think I, think I underestimated uh, his abilities when I said what, he should be on Broadway because the fact is Joe is someone that needs to be all over the country. And, and I, I'm so happy that he's being honored because what he has done in taking the lead, a leadership role on the issue of Alzheimer's and trying to get this country, not only our community, but this country focused on finding a cure uh, that will help thousands and thousands, really millions of people all across the country, it will be in large part because of Joe Arciniega. So I, I think I limited him when I first thought he should be on Broadway. The fact is, we need him all over the country. I'm very glad and very proud that he's from Laredo and that we're honoring him. Whatever Rotary may mean to us, Paul Harris said so long ago, to the world it will be known by the results it achieves. The same can be said about tonight's honoree, my dear friend, Joe Arciniega, for indeed, 
he is known by the results he achieves. Given his outstanding commitment to Rotary's mantra, service above self, Joe certainly is a most distinguished and worthy recipient of Rotary's highest honor, the Paul Harris Fellow, for going above and beyond in serving our community through promoting change and understanding. Joe's results are impressive because his leadership is effective. He is the champion of causes and issues that are as critical as they are timely. The minute he returned to Laredo, he was at the forefront of promoting the Boys and Girls Club and the arts. He garnered quite a fan base as an actor and singer, especially his stellar performance as Don Quixote, which I remember vividly. A devoted husband to Tina, who shares his pride and joy in their four children and two grandchildren, Joe evolved from a local to a national leader who fights for our families. Indeed, those early experiences prepared him to emerge center stage of local, state, and national platforms articulating his unwavering commitment to Alzheimer's awareness, prevention, treatment, and research for a cure. Joe's story is a testament to resilience, empathy, and the transformative power of advocacy. Having witnessed the impact of Alzheimer's on his beloved father and family, he channeled his grief into action. From being his dad's loving caregiver to becoming a national ambassador for the Alzheimer's Association, Joe exemplifies the strength that can rise from adversity. With a fervent dedication that extends beyond personal narratives, he is particularly passionate about raising Alzheimer's awareness among Hispanics who are disproportionately affected. That is why he welcomes every opportunity to prepare us to deal with the problems related to Webb County being tied for first place in Alzheimer's incidents statewide and ninth place nationally. With his historical dramatizations and engagements, our ambassador interweaves his knowledge with his rich Texan heritage, and sharing that stories of resilience like those of his ancestors find a prominent place in our shared narrative. In his quest for a world without Alzheimer's, Joe lends his voice to those who need it most, urging legislators to fund crucial initiatives and to increase research funding. His volunteer lobbying for critical legislative initiatives such as BOLD, Building Our Largest Dementia Infrastructure for Alzheimer's Act, showcases his commitment to systemic change. Today, Joe's work is his calling, a tribute to his father's memory, and a call to action for us all. Thank you, Gateway Rotary, for selecting Joe Arciniega as your 2024 Paul Harris Fellow and for affording us this opportunity to celebrate not only his personal achievements, but also the collective strength that arises from all who embrace your mantra, service above self. Joe, your dedication, leadership, and passion inspire us all, and we honor you as our beacon of hope, our North Star in our quest for a better future in our fight against Alzheimer's. Congratulations, my friend. Clearly, you are a most worthy Paul Harris Fellow. Joe and I have known each other for a very long time. We met when I, I think I was 15 and he was 16 or, or I, you know, I was 16 and he was 17. But if you go to the Laredo Little Theater down in the front row, um, on the armrest of one of the seats, it says uh, Tina and Joe met here in, in 1976. So we're, we're back at literally at the, at the place where we met. Joe, Joe has been an, uh, you know, an integral part of my life and has been the most important person in my life and has been a wonderful, wonderful husband and an absolutely amazing father to our children and has set a beautiful example of bringing a, a blended family together in, in, in love and, and sharing and, and equality, which is so hard for many people when they're, when they're blending a, two different families into one. And he has also set a beautiful example for our children of being a person who gives to the community. Joe has always been a person who is involved in what can I do to improve my community and then beyond that. When we lived in Seattle, he was he was the head of, um, for Microsoft, there was a time that he was the head of, of United Way, giving one year. So he, he was always very involved in, in organizations and in works that were all about service to the community. Now, in these past few years, of course, Joe's focus 
after many other, even decades doing other work, we were both very involved in the Laredo Theater Guild International for a good number of years. So he's one of the founding members. And it really was all about bringing quality theatrical work to Laredo. And then for all of our students, when um, he envisioned the Class on Stage series where free shows are, are produced every year for Laredo students at no cost. That's what I mean by free shows. It was never free to produce the show. But um, I guess the thing that I think is so important about Joe is that he has vision, he has clarity, and he is a person who puts in the time. I am often asleep and Joe is working well into the night, two, three o'clock in the morning, still working on his nonprofits, as he says. So he he's not retired. I'm not retired. He's still working all day long and then continuing to to do the the work that it takes to now the Alzheimer's Association. Now his current focus and I think the focus now for the rest of his life is what can I do to improve the lives of, of people who are dealing with this, with this devastating, catastrophic event in their lives when people that they love are, are now declining and there is no way to stop it. There is no cure. And every day or every month or every year it gets worse and there's never any getting better. So after everything we went through with his father's illness and our friends at Raoul Staggs' mother's illness that we were so intimately aware of everything that was going on, we started realizing more and more friends were all having these experiences and people just weren't talking about it. And in a community like Laredo, where we live with so many people that are related to us, where we also have help that we can hire in our own homes available to us, people just were keeping it very private, which is their right, of course. But when we're not speaking about it, we aren't realizing the, the incredible ex extent to which it is literally exploding in our community. And so that's been Joe's focus. What can I do to help my community? And what can I do to help beyond that to really make the world somehow a better place for all of us who are dealing with dementia. People come up to us on the street and, and say to him, I want to talk to you about my father. I want to talk to you about my mother. He is always open to just people wanting to say, I'm struggling with this and I'm, I'm so sad. And he's become a real, um, a real person, a, a real shoulder for, for many. I don't personally have a member of my family that I know for certain has ever had Alzheimer's. When I was a little girl, my great grandmother had dementia is what, is what my uncle, Dr. Canseco said. It was his mother, my, my grandmother. And, and, that, and, and she passed away when I was still a little girl. That was my only personal experience with dementia until I saw Joe dealing with his father's decline and he, was literally the only person to be there to take care of his father. And it involved, at that time, his father lived in San Antonio and Joe was going back and forth to San Antonio every week, if not several times a week. So maintaining our, our home here and, and, and his job, but constantly traveling, even at the, at the drop of a hat because of a new crisis. And I knew that I had to do my part and in at least keeping the equilibrium at home so that there weren't there weren't crises here and crises there so i don't consider it in any way a supplanting of self i consider it the absolute the absolute point of a partnership in a marriage which is that you are a person who is there to love and support in every way you can your, your spouse whenever he or she is going through whatever the crisis is or whatever the devastating catastrophic event might be as this one with, with his father. So I felt I was alone a lot of the time because he was constantly in San Antonio, but 
I, I knew that he would have done the same for me. I knew it if, if it had been someone in my family and he would have done more because I would have, I would have counted on him to drive somewhere, to go take care of something else. Whereas he did all of that for his dad and I was just keeping things calm and, and taken care of at home. But now he's traveling all the time to all of his national board meetings and, and I support that 100%. I'm not retired. I'm, I'm a teacher at United High School or I would be accompanying him, but I do, I have gone on one or two occasions when it worked out with my timing that I could do it, but uh, we miss each other. We speak every night. He, he's able to tell me about all the important events that are taking place at uh, these, these cures that appear to be right on the horizon. I feel so blessed to be albeit a backseat, but a backseat to history somehow being made, because even though Joe himself is not a, a researcher a researcher or a scientist, he is still there at the brink, along with everybody on his board, of getting the word out, getting the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid to, to approve medications that hadn't been approved. And um, I feel that however small his, or, or large, his little postscript to history will be, I'm, I'm, I'm tagged along with that and I feel very proud of that. Buenos dias. I'm, I'm Joe Arciniega from Laredo, Texas. In 1963, when I was five years old, my parents divorced. It was the last time I had any sort of substantive relationship with my father until 2010 when he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease at the age of 74 and I became his caregiver. It was a, a brutal experience because Alzheimer's pushed us into a relationship that neither of us had ever experienced, intimacies that neither of us could even imagine. The first strikes were brutal, uh, assuming his finances, taking his car away. Removing him from his house. Then worse, shaving, dressing him bathing, urine samples, and personal cleaning. By the end, my father could no longer swallow, and he died in 2015. I was holding his hand, and uh, he was peaceful, probably as relieved as I. I was in my father's care for the first five years of my life, and he was in mine for the last five years of his. Better than nothing, but I wouldn't wish it on any of you. My volunteer advocacy and activism was launched right then in 2015. I'm on the National Board of Directors of the Alzheimer's Association, serving our vision of a world without Alzheimer's disease and other dementia. I lobby our elected officials for research funding, for treatments and a cure, and work hard, push them hard for legislation and local services to help my community that is suffering right now. Alzheimer's impacts Hispanics one and a half times more than non-Hispanic whites, and Laredo is 95.5% Hispanic. Our county totals are number one in the state of Texas and number nine in the United States. My community is under assault. And I will never stop serving to remove this thing, this monster from among us. Never. Adelante. Thank you. Thank you.